up? This is Pretty Boy Floyd. You watching Jeter with Ernest Johnson, the one and only. Yo, this is your boy Marvin Sapp, and you're watching Jeter TV, family television with power. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. I want to welcome you to this Christmas special of Jesus is the answer. Amen. Let's give the winds a mighty blow. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus is coming back again in the midst of of all of the tragedy that America's been through, Jesus is still alive and well. In the middle of everything going through, this is going to be one of the best Christmases we've ever had. Amen. God is restoring the country. He's restoring, even though we still are battling these viruses and things of that nature. I come to tell you that Jesus is still alive and well. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we are celebrating his birthday. Amen. I see this year they started celebrating before Thanksgiving. Amen. And now the whole world acknowledges that Jesus Christ was born. Amen. Born to save our lives. Born to die on the cross that we might have a right to the tree of life. Amen. You know, Christmas doesn't mean a lot to you if you think it's just Santa Claus and Christmas gifts because this year there may be a lot of people that won't be getting gifts because of us just getting out of this pandemic and, and the loss of jobs and the loss of finances and income. Amen. But I come to tell you that Jesus is the reason for this holiday season. It's because of Jesus Christ the entire world celebrates. Isn't it amazing, no matter what their religion is, Jesus is still God manifested in the flesh, and the whole world acknowledges that he was born. You know, when I was in service this morning, uh, I, I mentioned, I said, every spirit, the scripture says, every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus came in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus has not come in the flesh is not of God. So all of you people out there saying don't celebrate Christmas, don't celebrate. It's a paganistic uh, system because you went into the Old Testament. Amen. And I want you to know that the way they celebrate Christmas happened many, many years after that Old Testament scripture. And we do not decorate trees so that we can worship them. We decorate trees because of the winter season and the time that we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so excited that Jesus was born. And because Jesus was born, we have a right to the tree of life. And we have a right to be saved. And we have a right to live eternally and forever in peace. And the book of Revelation said we're going to that place where he's going to wipe away all tears. Amen. And death will be no more, and there'll be no more sorrow. Don't you want to look forward to that? Jesus died that you might have a right to the tree of life. The scripture says, except one man die and fall to the ground, it does not bring forth more fruit. So Jesus died, and he was, but the Bible says in three days he rose again. The, and the Bible says he's ascended, and he's sitting at the right hand of God, Amen. Ever making intercession for the saints. So I just want to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the reason for this season. I want to pray right now. We're going to share a couple of music videos with you. Amen. And we're going to celebrate Jesus. I'm going to share a portion of the sermon that I preached in this Sunday morning service. I'm going to share that with you. Amen. And I know that you're going to be blessed. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, thank you. Thank you for coming down, dying for us, that we might have a right to the tree of life. Father, we ask you, Lord, to touch those that are watching this broadcast right now and let them rejoice and celebrate that they're actually able to celebrate another one of your birthdays. We thank you, Jesus. 
that all the hell we've been through, the pandemics, the social unrest, the George Floyd situation, the cops killing folks and people killing folks and the racism and all the things that we've been through, yet you are still Lord. You are still God. You are still in control. And Father, we thank you. We praise you now. And we say happy birthday to you, Jesus. And Lord, the greatest gift that we can give you is our lives. And Father, I repent of any sin, any shortcoming. And I repent and confess the sin of your people that are watching right now. That we come before you with clean hearts and a clean hand. And a heart that has not lifted up its soul unto vanity. And our faces are clean. Thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm excited. Listen, I want to read this for you. In the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse number 18. Amen. It's famous scripture. Everybody reads it for Christmas, but I'm just going to read it for you. I'm not going to preach or teach or anything. We're going to take you into the sermon. Amen. You'll hear the message today. But it says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother, as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, she was engaged before they came together, before they had sex, before they became intimate, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to preach about that this morning. How in the world does a woman get pregnant without a man? And Jesus is the first person in history that was birthed without the help of a man. See, the Bible says that Adam and Eve were made. God kneeled down by the side of the bank and made them and formed them of the dust of the ground. Then the Bible says he breathed into their nostrils and they became living souls. But here, Jesus was birthed as the Holy Ghost moved upon her and impregnated her with, the, with this child Jesus. God manifested in the flesh. Jesus said in another place, the scripture says, Behold, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. And so that's what Jesus came to do is to do the will of God. And what is that? Become the propitiation. Propitiation. Say that with me. Propitiation. Say that with me again. Propitiation. Which means that Jesus became God in the flesh to connect us humans back to a spiritual God. He is the connecting point. Amen, for us to get to God. And today, God has ordained the preachers, amen, to preach the gospel and to stand in Christ's stead to get us connected to God. And also, when Jesus died, the veil of the temple was rent, rent in two. That means that we no longer need a priest to get into the holies of holies. You can get straight to God yourself. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I'm going to give it to you. He said, pray. He said, pray without ceasing. And as you pray, that's your direct communication with Jesus Christ. This is what he was born to do, to connect us back to God. Aren't you excited about that? If you have not been connected back to God, you still have the opportunity to do that. Because if you're listening to me, a live dog is better than a dead lion. Hiya, mama, shanda, So look what it says here. So the Bible says that Joseph, her husband, being a just man, so he was a righteous man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. So he was going to sneak her away and get rid of her. Amen. I don't know what it means, put her away privately, because he did not want to deal with the embarrassment. But let me show you something. Sometimes you have to be embarrassed for the sake of Christ. You have to be embarrassed for the gospel. Amen. And, and really, you're not being embarrassed. But, you, you know, you, you, the Bible says the apostles were put forth as an open spectacle to the world. They were beat, they were lied, spit upon, fed to the lions, uh, chastised. And let me tell you this to you. They weren't just chastised by the world. Matter of fact, most of them wasn't chastised by the world. They were chastised by the church. Amen. That's why Paul said, I have trouble within and I have trouble without. And so look what it says here. And it says, uh, but while he thought on these things, he was going to put his wife away. He said, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, 
For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. What she has in her did not come from you. It did not come from man. It came from God. And so notice this. The Bible says it came from the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost, which is the spiritual power of God that dwells in us today. If we've been filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongue, and we're walking and being led by the Spirit of God, then the Spirit can do many mighty miracles in us, through us, and with us. And so the Bible says this baby was born of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God, I feel the anointing. And it says, and, and she shall bring forth a son. So the angel is not only saying that this woman is of the Holy Ghost, that this baby is born of the Holy Ghost, but then the angel turns around and names the baby. Oh, by Shanda da da Many of you parents, when you were having your children, you prayed, what should I name them? What should I call them? But the angel said, she shall bring forth a son. So there's the gender reveal. It wasn't a daughter. It was a son. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus. Yahshua HaMessiah. Jesus, amen, for he shall save his people from their sins. So the reason that Jesus was born was to save man from his sin. He did not come to buy you a Cadillac. He did not come to get your Mercedes. He did not come to get your house. Just work, pay your rent, pay your bills, keep your credit good, and you can get all that stuff. But what he came is to save you from your sin. So if you don't want to be saved from your sin, then Christmas means nothing to you but Santa Claus and presents and Christmas trees. But if Jesus saves you from your sin, then all of that stuff is the worldly stuff that they're worried about. But the key and the reason for Christmas is Jesus was born to save his people from their sin. That's why it's important to use the name of Jesus. The blood is in the name because Jesus shed the name. Lord have mercy. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sin. Behold, and it says, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, so this ain't no last minute thing or surprise thing it was prophesied or foretold thousands of years earlier and the bible says behold a virgin shall be with child okay already that's strange a virgin a virgin having a baby that's unheard of but not with god because the holy ghost can do anything and it says and, and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I don't know why people fight the fact that Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. Because it says right here they're going to call him Emmanuel. And the name Emmanuel is not his actual name. It's a title name. It's a, a represented name, a, a, a descriptive name, which is God with us. So who is Jesus? He's not just another prophet. He's not just another priest. Even though he walked in the office of the prophet, he walked in the office of the priest. He's not just another priest. He's not just another prophet. He is God with us. So God came down through 42 generations out of glory, put on the form of sinful flesh, and was tempted at every point as we are, yet without sin. Woo! Glory to God. That's the Christmas message. That Jesus was born just like us. And the Bible said he was tempted in every area like we are, yet without sin. Woo! Because he did not have the Adamic sin nature because he was born of the Holy Ghost. I just got a revelation. When you get born again and he fills you with the Holy Ghost, yes, you still have the Adamic sin nature. But now you have the God nature in you. And it's up to you to choose this day who you're going to serve. So when you have the God nature in you, you now have the ability to say no. You don't just have to listen to Nancy Reagan to just say no. Now you have power to say no. You have power to overcome the flesh. You have power 
to mortify the deeds of your flesh. That's why he gave you the Holy Ghost. He knows you can't live without sin, but that's why he gave you power. He said, after the Holy Ghost, Acts 1 and 8, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power to be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. God gave you power. And the Bible says, uh, then Joseph being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So who named Jesus? The angel. Who did the angel talk to? To Joseph. He didn't talk to Mary. He talked to Joseph, the man of the house. And then what did Joseph do? He obeyed the voice of the angel. How are you going to be saved? By obeying the voice of God. See, he don't have to send you an angel to tell you this, but he sent an angel to tell Mary, amen, to tell Joseph that his name, she shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Oh, my God, can I get a witness in the house? So that's it. This is the birth of Jesus Christ. And the only way the birth of Jesus Christ is going to matter to you is you have to accept him first as your Savior. Repent of your sin. Be baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And oh my God, I'm excited for the fact that Jesus Christ was born. That we might have a right to the tree of life. We're going to go to this important message. We're going to take this break right now. And we ask you to stay tuned. I'll be back at the end of the broadcast to give you my final Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I pray that you are blessed, amen, by this message. Okay, we'll be right back right after this. Never get yourself to the place where somebody's got you so angry that you are out of control. Where you're so greedy for money, you're out of control. Where you hate somebody so much that you're out of control. And that's why if you're saved, you can never join the Jehovah Witnesses. You can never join the Hebrew Israelites because the first thing they want you to do is deny the deity of Jesus Christ. And let me explain this to you, and I'm going to close. The scripture says, you could blaspheme Jesus. Ah, oh, Jesus wasn't nothing. He was just a son. He was just a man. He was just a prophet. You could blaspheme Jesus, and he said, I'll forgive you for that. That's because you don't really know who I am. But he said, if you blaspheme the work of the Holy Ghost, if you blaspheme the work of the Holy Ghost, you see somebody get healed, talk about that's the devil. But you, you, been, you, have to have, you have to have had the Holy Ghost to turn on the Holy Ghost and blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You blaspheme the work of God. You know how when we was kids, you see people shouting and dancing. Ah, they shouting and dancing. Then you go home and play along with it. You shout and dance. You didn't know. You was just a kid. But you have the Holy Ghost. You've walked in the gifts of the Spirit. There are preachers that have turned on the church to say, that is the devil. Welcome to hell. Never let Satan get you that low where you become an enemy of the cross of Christ. As much as I know dirt on preachers, my mouth is shut. 
I'm not putting my mouth on no preacher. I don't care what they did because that's God's anointed and God has to deal with them. Can you get a witness in the house? Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I am just excited to be in this season where we're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I just want to wish every last one of you, your families, your friends, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and remind you, keep Jesus in Christmas, and Jesus is the reason for this holiday season. God bless you. Be blessed. And the best is yet to come. And remember, Jesus is the answer. We love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful holiday season. that you see I remember when I felt your love was not enough Praise the Lord, this is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I want to give you a special invitation to come and visit us at the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church and World Television Center, amen, for a powerful service where God moves under the anointing, healing, deliverance, and a special word, especially for you. God has a word for you at the Jesus is the Answer Church. We're located at 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Uh, maybe you work on Sunday, maybe you're not in the local area, but you can take part by giving a seed, sowing a seed, sowing a donation to help us with this work here at Jesus is the Answer. You can go to our cash app, which is dollar sign Jita 99. And again, that's dollar sign Jita, J-I-T-A 99. Or you can go to our uh, uh, online television channel and donate there. And that's at Jita, J-I-T-A TV. Dot org, Jita dot org, and the upper right hand corner is the donation button. All right, or call us. Call the number on your screen, 310-637-7086, and let the operator know how much you want to give. And you can give by credit card, or we, they can send you the letter out. But please, give. Help us financially to continue to do the work that God has called us to do. All right, God bless you. We'll either see you in the sanctuary, or we'll see your contribution right here at Jesus is the Answer. We love you now and thank you. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I am excited to have you to be a part of the Jita TV family. I am thank you. I thank you. My wife thanks you. The saints thank you for praying for this ministry because the enemy has tried on every hand to shut us down, shut down our TV station, shut down our Internet. But because of you, our partners praying for us. And for you, our partners that support this ministry on a continual basis, we thank and praise God for you, and we're praying for you. Uh, I want to remind you that God spoke to me two years ago, and he took me to the book of Acts chapter 19. And this is what it reads, 19 verse 11. And the Bible says, And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from his body were brought to, unto the sick, handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. As far as the prayer cloth, you know, I repent because I've had mine in my bedroom by my side. It's in my dresser. But recently the Lord just showed me that with a prayer cloth, you can actually lay it on what ails you. You have the anointed oil, put the anointed oil upon the cloth, and put it on whatever 
body part it is that you need healing for so that the Lord can heal you. God told me to pray over these cloths, put them on the altar of my church. Amen. And these have been on the altar since January, beginning of this year. And we have prayer counselors and warriors that pray every week over these cloths. Change your life. Change your situation today. Tear down those strongholds. Call right now. The prayer counselor standing by to pray for you so that we can send you the blessed oil and the anointed prayer cloth. Get yours today absolutely free. Jesus I expect when I come to that prayer, this prayer is going to be answered because if, if I don't believe that he's able to do something, then I feel like if I'm coming to him with prayer, I'm going to, if I'm sorry, if I'm coming to him with fear, I'm going to get what I fear most. Prayer changes things. It changes situations. It changes circumstances. But most of all, prayer changes you. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I'm the pastor of the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church and World Television Ministries. And one of the things I was sitting in my office and I was contemplating and thinking about uh, what do I respond to people who ask the question, what must I do to be saved? So the first thing you have to do is you have to hear the gospel. And the Bible says, how shall they hear of him whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach except he be sent? Number two, what do you do? Believe the gospel. Number three, what do you do? Repent. What does repent mean? It doesn't mean God forgive me and you're going to go back and do the same thing. It means God forgive me and I'm going to change my life. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for what purpose? What is the purpose of baptism? Baptism is for the remission or the removal of your sin. And then the third step, he says, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. TV. Family television with power.